really tried to keep a very simple human interface aspect to this. There's not a lot of buttons and knobs. There's a single knob with an integrated push button. Regardless of what screen you're on, you're really displaying all the same information. You're just displaying it slightly different. And we never pull that information away from you. You can see that that small engine analyzer zipped up into the upper right-hand corner there. But on the fuel screen that we're on here quickly, you can see we've got some additional fuel computer information, initial fuel, fuel used, fuel efficiencies actually been requested. We now calculate it and provide it for you in nautical miles per gallon. Fuel at destination, which is similar to fuel reserve, is now also being displayed in gallons. And of course, we'll calculate for you your time to destination as well. And this gives you a graphic representation of the aircraft's total fuel load capability and where you reside at this point in time. There are some other uh, pages within the setup screen which the pilot can access in flight. He can get to a portion of those options. He can get to his brightness control. He can set these bugs in the upper, right, upper left-hand corner here. Those are pilot settable indications or bugs as they've normally been called for the last 30 or 40 years where the pilot can set a geographic landmark for each one of his controls where he can now use that when he wants to pull power let's say for descent he can pull back to those bugs or when he's doing his leaning process when he's ready for cruise altitude he can pull that fuel flow back to that point as well just one of the other nice features we've incorporated and it becomes beneficial our, pri our pilots really become accustomed to the system from a human factors and, and absorbing the information and realizing that this is really going to put it in a much better perspective and reduce that scan time and pilot workload rather than needing to scan an entire panel or scattered panel of engine instrumentation he can now look in or he or she can now look in one place gather all the information they need and get Get back to flying the aircraft. Aero TV is brought to you by. Today, there is an affordable, high performance, easy to own, and easy to operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500. The jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. You notice in the lower right hand corner here, we've got some digital indications, which again always remain in the same place, but especially in the lower right hand section here, you see we have bus voltage and your, your charging circuitry monitoring all in one place. So that again gives you, most pilots now are able to monitor volts directly and digitally, but they can pull up and they can see both of their charging and bus voltage in one place. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen when there's an alarm? And let's talk about that because I haven't covered that at this point. Again, you can see with the digital indications, as any one of these indications gets into the yellow arc or the caution range, the digital indication turns bright yellow, so it allows the pilot to scan for color. If and when an overspeed or red line condition were to occur, that digital indication is going to turn bright red. In the upper right hand corner, there's a large warning box that comes up that tells the pilot in very clear English what the problem is. And I'm going to use AMPS as an example. You know, a common question is, well, what if I have an electrical failure? You know, I've integrated all of my engine instrumentations into a single electrical display. What if I have an electrical failure? Well, I think we would both agree that total, complete, and instantaneous electrical failures are very uncommon. Mm -hmm. But what is very common, all too common, is to have a charging system failure. Okay, And in the current instrumentation that most aircraft are outfitted with, you may or may not know that your charging system has failed until you have some of your electrical equipment begin to fail. Mm -hmm. You know, if you happen to glance at your ammeter, you might see it. Well, what the Oracle is going to do, or the CRM 2100, is that is going to turn bright red, okay, when it fails because you're now going to be in a, gis a discharge scenario versus a charging scenario. That's going to turn bright red, and you'll immediately get a warning in the upper right-hand corner that says, hey, and it will say, amps too low. Very simple to interpret, especially if you happen to be IFR. You don't want to have to determine. It's going to tell you. So at that point, versus where you have with your current instrumentation, you've now been alerted 
to the condition when it immediately presented itself, which now gives you options, options you may not have had previously. So above and beyond that, again, speaking of electrical capabilities, we've designed the CRM2100 and actually the entire Oracle product family to operate down to less than 6 volts DC. So as far as a 14-volt system, let's say, uh, if you did have a charging system failure, this is now going to operate off that battery long after any of the other equipment in the aircraft. And also as far as the uh, starting procedure would be, because again, this is connected to the master versus the avionics bus, what the pilot is going to see is a very stable working system during engine start, even though it's a piece of electronics. You're going to see bus voltages on a cold cranking event drop down to eight or eight and a half volts. The unit's not going to reset. The oil pressure will be indication will be right there just as you always expected. So it's a comfort level. It's a level of redundancy and really a level of reliability that uh, is important in a system like this. Aero TV is brought to you by. Today. There is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. What this system is providing you is a completely redundant monitoring system for RPM, oil pressure, amps, and your instrument air or vacuum system. Okay. And I did refer to this as a system. We do have a patent for it. It's an entirely separate system, a redundant monitoring system built into the same enclosure that really gives the pilot just that extra level of redundancy if it's green or if the indication is green you're operating in the green if it turns red then you've got an overspeed condition or a red line as simple as it gets. it's about as simple as it gets and it will track everything that's going on in the rest of the system but it's entirely separate separate power supply there's absolutely no software it's simple analog switching but it provides a backup for the screen and the supporting circuitry because if the screen were to fail you know commonly asked well what's going to happen I've lost all my engine data well that's true and not entirely true because we have incorporated this separate system to monitor those four very important functions so you're now going to have the ability to confidently fly the aircraft where you need to to get to a safe landing the entire system at this point is between $6,300 and $7,000. Okay. okay. That does include, again, with the network system, all the components, all of the cables, and all of the brand new sensors to upgrade the aircraft to the 21st century, get yourself a full solid state system installed in your aircraft, and really have a, have a glass panel in what could be your favorite, if not you know, aircraft you're going to have for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. So it's really a chance for people to upgrade their panels affordably. Okay, and again, you've got now levels of safety that you didn't have before. Maintenance issues can go away. Uh, upgrading and calibrating the existing gauges no longer needs to happen. But again, at that level, and an average installation between 30 and 35 hours, it becomes an affordable solution to upgrade the aircraft to a full glass panel.